Mike and Greg with The Rewind. Today, we're going to talk about the NCAA tournament and NFL free agency. So, Mike, although Butler and North Carolina look pretty similar on paper statistically, what do you think Butler's going to have to do to stop North Carolina's high-scoring offense? Well, you said it right there, high-scoring. So, they're going to have to defend like they've never defended before, for one. And they're going to have to out-rebound North Carolina, which is never an easy thing to do. Um, they're, Like you said, they're going to have to keep pace with them. Um, this North Carolina team runs up and down the court. like There's no tomorrow. Um, they'll get a rebound. They'll go up and down the court in two seconds and score. Exactly. And you won't even know what, you, what hit you. Exactly. So it's going to be a good game. Like always, Sweet 16, anytime you're in Sweet 16 and on, they are going to be good games like we saw the other day. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a prediction for the game? I, I do believe that Butler has a slight chance in this game, and I do think they will pull it off. Okay. And I, I just don't think North Carolina, even though they're, they're a good team, this isn't the team that's going to win them a national championship. This isn't the national championship caliber North Carolina team we're used to. Whereas you see the Kansas, um, this this Kansas team this year is national championship caliber. Oh, already. absolutely. Butler has a slight chance, and I think they do pull it off in this one. When I first saw the bracket, the first team that really jumped out at me as a team that was, in my opinion, the most likely to be upset like this, it was North Carolina. Just because, like you said, they are a good team, but they're just not that team this year. Right. They're a great team right. against a lot of opponents. Any opponent, really. I'd give them the upper hand. But I also think that they're the most likely to be upset. Right. So, and we saw that with the Villanova team really early in exactly. the round of 32. Um, get upset by Wisconsin, which is, Wisconsin's a great team in their own right, though. So. Absolutely. And this Butler team's hungry. If there's anybody that's going to go out there and try and get a victory, it's it's definitely Butler. It's like we saw the last Carolina team. Right, we saw that last night with Xavier. It's a good chance for them to prove themselves. Right, exactly. Prove that they're you know in the tournament at a you know four seed for a reason. Exactly. They deserve it. Um. So, in your opinion, how important is it for Jonathan Motley to get going early? For the Bears to really uh, set the pace of the game against the game guys. Well, like any game they play in, he's the key to their offense okay. and yep. essentially their defense in a way because he's really good at blocking shots. He he's a very good rebounder. Exactly. Yep. And when he gets going, the whole team thrives off of that, and they all do well and they start making shots, rebounding, playing good team basketball. And when that happens, that team can get. They're very scary. Exactly. And they can beat anybody at that point. Yeah, they're a very offensively driven team, too. Absolutely. I very think the long. jerseys help them out, actually. Yeah, those, they do have the dopest jerseys. Well, Oregon wore those kind of neon green ones last night as well. They, like, stick out. There's something about them. Yeah, they're just flashy. Something. I like them. Um, do you think that the Gamecocks can uh, keep this momentum going and really give it to Baylor and come out with the W? I don't know about coming out with the W, but I think the momentum will continue into the game. Okay. And it will affect the game tremendously. It'll be a great game, close game, like that Michigan-Oregon game yesterday. The South Carolina team has great momentum. As we saw with the Michigan team previously, they lost yesterday. They had seven games on their belt. That's all it takes. A couple of wins here and there uh, in a row consecutively will boost any team's uh, confidence for sure. going, going, for sure. going into a big game like this. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean. So, so, I'm assuming your prediction would be that Baylor wins the game. It's, it's hard not to pick Baylor in this matchup. I would agree. Likewise, it was a big shock when they beat Duke. Yeah. It's hard to, yes. hard to pick against these big teams, you know? Yeah. But the momentum, it's hard not to pick the South Carolina team with what they have going on for them right now. That is very true, too. But I do, in the end, I do have Baylor winning this one. Do 
you think it's going to be a it, it's by gonna, a large margin? No, or? absolutely not. It's going to be a battle of strength, rebounding, and it's going to be a low scoring game, I believe. Okay. Um, a little more defense. Absolutely, it'll come down to the wire. And those sure. games are so fun to watch. Those that's real basketball, in my opinion. Uh, good defense and a lot of uh, good rebounding is makes makes a good game and. Although it's not the high-powered offenses, we're looking right. for Kansas. You know, 100 points a game, 60, 60 points will win you a game. Uh, but if you win by one point, you know, two points, one point wins a game. So in the it's, end, it's really easy to be a fan of scoring. Oh, but God, to be a fan of good defensive basketball is, you know, like like Mike said, real basketball. You know, like the. The old the, school way. The gritty basketball yeah. that you like to get, see. Get the job done. Yeah. Nothing comes easy and you're going to pay for what you do good. Absolutely. Um, what do you think the deciding factor will be in this uh, amazing matchup between Kentucky and UCLA? Well, first of all, it's going to be a great game to watch. Two yes. amazing oh, teams. Absolutely. And I'm sure LeVar Ball is going to be chirping his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> which is not no anything new. But no, no. He's made some bold claims. Very, very bold in his own right. But, you know, it's not affecting his son, as we can see. Yeah. His son's no. grown up with it. All of their sons, um, they're used to it. And that's not, it doesn't affect their basketball play. But this UCLA team, it's it's not just the ball. Um, there's a great team around him that get the job done, too. Oh, absolutely. And I think, yeah. But this Kentucky team also can, I think they're going to run together and it's going to be another close game. Like always, these Sweet 16s are usually close. On yes. Well, yeah, because like you said, they're all good games. They're all good matchups. They're two historic teams going up against, this is a heavyweight battle, if you would like. If oh, you would absolutely. Say, of great universities and traditions, and they both really, really want to win. Do you think that... In any way, Le LeVar Ball or anything that he said has affected the team rather than just Lonzo? The guys around the team, I don't I don't believe they're even paying attention to it. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, I, I think Ball, his son, may have mentioned that this might happen. Maybe that's just an assumption I might have that this may happen. He might have said something before they even got in the NCAA tournament. And he said, this is what my dad's like. You might see this. Don't worry about it. Um, it's going to happen either way, so just don't worry about it. You know, something like that. But right. there's always those few people that will take it and listen to it and kind of take, affect them in a negative yeah. way maybe. But I don't think it has any effect on the team. I mean, I don't think LeVar Ball is coming from a place that's <clears throat> negative or demeaning towards anyone but it just comes off as very strong and you know whether it really affects Lonzo Ball or not it is kind of mute because it's all going to be on how everybody else perceives LeVar, right. LeVar <laughs> Ball's effect on his son Lonzo so Lonzo can say whatever he wants and the media really is going to believe whatever they want so this, the media, in my opinion, the is just something that right could maybe not directly affect him, but maybe like uh, add pressure from other sources due to it. Makes sense, yeah. Like even just putting a doubt in someone's mm -hmm. mind, right? Could you know what I mean? Could hey. it's, it's a seed of doubt. It's not anything major, right. and I don't. You know, I highly doubt this does affect him and I think he's going to be a great player in the NBA and I think he's going to be a great player in the rest of his college career however long he decides to play not much longer well hopefully not because he's a very talented kid uh, but like I said I don't think it I'm not saying it necessarily does affect him I'm just saying somewhere along the lines it could and I could see where it would or why right um so um, I think the question that we're all really asking as well is, can Wisconsin score on Florida's defense? And if they can, how do you think they're going to try to go about it? Well, it's not going to be easy, <laughs> for one. Well, yeah, Florida is a very talented team, very defensive-minded team. And 
Wisconsin, I believe, <clears throat> will be able to drive in with their big men. They have a couple good big men that can get the job done down low. Mm -hmm. And if they're they're on point that night, it could be a tough tough night for Florida. Yeah, I agree. I also agree. I think uh, Wisconsin's guards will play a big role in being able to spread that defense out a little bit. But it's all, I, I, I agree. I think it's all going to come down to how Florida's defense plays and come down to how Wisconsin's big men play. I don't think it's going to be a shooting battle right. by any means. Another one of those low-scoring defensive games right. based on momentum. But then again, we all see surprises, and maybe this will be a surprise, and maybe one team will just take it and run with it and be a blowout. I think the biggest key for me for Wisconsin's victory is for <coughs> Wisconsin's big men to stay out of foul trouble mm -hmm. and really try to get down low and get Florida's big men in foul trouble. I think that's, that's going to be the a big biggest key, key to really putting a big dent in this Florida defense. Um, <coughs> so, I know you're a Michigan fan and all this kind of stings. But all bias aside, I don't want to hear you say it. What do you <laughs> think the Wolverines could have done differently to have sealed the deal? I think they played a great game for one. Oh, I completely um, agree with you. It's hard. That's why I was trying to. I was trying to answer that question myself, and it was really hard for me because they played so good, and it was another one of those games where it wasn't like. Michigan lost. It was like Oregon won. Well, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> um, right. But being a Michigan fan and watching all their games throughout the season, uh, seeing the maize and blue transition from what they were in the beginning of the year to what they were at the end of this NCAA tournament yesterday was an amazing process for one. Oh, absolutely. They, they're they a younger team and have many talented kids that can get the job done, as I say all the all the time. They can do what they need to do, and John Beeline's a great coach. But in that game yesterday, they made – they didn't make enough layups. They had many layup opportunities that they missed. They also got out-rebounded, which usually happens, and is unfortunate. They need to work on their rebounding, get yeah some work on that, because all throughout the season they've been out-rebounded, and that's one thing you can't have if you want to continue in the NCAA tournament at this stage. Exactly. In the Sweet 16, you need to be able to rebound the ball very efficiently. I mean, if they can score, that's not a problem. Exactly, no. But getting more rebounds is ideal, and I think that was... A huge factor in their loss, unfortunately. I would have to completely but, agree. And the last shot that Derek Walton took was a great shot, and that's probably the guy I wanted to take the shot, in my opinion. That's who you want. You want I, would, your, I don't think of, I couldn't think of anybody else. You want your senior leaden player to take the yep. shot. I mean, there's no other person that should have taken the shot. No. At all. No. And... Yeah, I'd have to completely agree. So I had no issues with them losing. They played a great game, and they had a good season, and hopefully next year will be even better. It was definitely one of those seasons, and you can tell the you can tell a team is well coached when even like even when you go through the regular season and have a par slightly above par game like season, yeah, and then you go to the Big Ten tournament. You win the Big Ten tournament. After being in a plane crash. You go to the NCAA tournament. All right. You get to the Sweet 16. Yeah, I mean. That's that's your team. Shows perseverance, right for one. Perseverance, confidence. And, I mean, anytime I've never, I've never been in a plane crash. Not that it was a catastrophic plane crash or anything, but it's scary. It's an event that'll, you know, put perspective on your life, for one. Sliding off a runway, that's kind of scary. In yeah. my, I mean, in my opinion. And to, for them to still play in the tournament, the Big Ten tournament, and win, that's that's a good accomplishment. Absolutely. For a young team like that, and make it to the Sweet 16. 
I feel like they've always had it in them. I just feel like, like John Beeline did a great job making sure that uh, all his players were ready to go and that they peaked at the right time. They played better basketball in the past couple weeks than they played out throughout the whole season, and they were decent through the whole season. Absolutely. And I think that's what it takes for any good team mm -hmm. that's truly good to get through the tournament is to just peak at the right time, play your best basketball at the end of the season, and they did. That's usually what uh, Izzo does Yeah. for State, but yeah. unfortunately this year they didn't do as well as they wanted to. Par seasons, yeah. peak at the end of the year. They have a good recruiting class coming in next year, and uh, what, hopefully they do a little yeah. bit better for it. should them. be interesting. Um, um, so what happened to Purdue? What, why, how did they get beat by 32 points? Where well, did they, what happened, where did they go? First of all, this Kansas team, as I've said earlier. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, amazing I'm team. Away from Kansas. They have a great team, but Purdue can't handle or stay in a game with that high power of an offensive no. team. No, their and, guards aren't good enough. Oh, my God. No, they're not. They have great forwards. Um, they they lean on Haas and Swanigan. Great players, but you can't win a game with two players like that. The guard play needs to step up a little bit for Purdue and the maybe in the next years coming up. But they're a good team, just mm -hmm. not good enough to beat a high powered Kansas team that has a chance at winning the national championship this year. Exactly. It's just one of those games. And and like you said, Kansas is just on fire. Frank Mason the third and um, <clears throat> uh, Joshua Jackson, they're just absolutely firing on all cylinders and it's going to be amazing to see any team stop them in my opinion mm -hmm. they're absolutely. just they're seasoned they are peaking at the right time bill self they're well well coached one of the best coaches in the game um it's one of those teams that nobody wants to play and i i wouldn't be surprised if they came out of this season as the national champions yeah absolutely man but actually xavier has never been to an Elite Eight, nor has Gonzaga. Wow, really? And they are playing each other. So it's going to be nice to see one of them yes, make it to an Elite that's Eight. Cool. That's cool. That's really cool. Because both of them have been in a tournament, you know, past 10 years or so, and they've always been good teams, but never went to that next level and made it to the Elite Eight since they've, neither one of them been there. So it'd be, it's going to be nice to see one of these teams make it. Yes, so for sure. It's something different, you know. Absolutely. You don't really think of you don't think of a national champion named Gonzaga. No. Or Xavier. No. But they're great schools oh, for basketball and they churn teams out in and out every year. They fruit it. <clears throat> and they make the tournament. So best of luck to uh, whatever team wins that game and hopefully they continue their success and move on even farther. Yeah. Um. So, would you say that Gonzaga is the favorite to go play Kansas? Oh. <clears throat> and I'm I'm speaking strictly based on bracket placement. Seeding wise, Gonzaga has the best chance to make it, and they they they, they play Kansas uh, if they win the next game or. They would Gonzaga would only play Kansas if they met in the national championship. Okay, game. Yeah, Gonzaga has the. That's what I was. I was asking okay. if they were I, favored to go. To the right. Okay. You know, Gonzaga. Because they don't have to play. Yeah, Gonzaga has quite an. I, will, I don't want to say easy because that's not ever. That's never true on an NCAA tournament. But right. Right. Statistically, they have in the easiest way to get there. And Kansas being high powered and playing well as it, as they are. I don't see anyone stopping them. I really can't either, to be honest. So, I mean, that could be a national championship game. I, but you got a UCLA team, a Kentucky team, that are really hungry. Yeah. They could pull something off there. They'd have so, to knock off Kansas. Right. and One nothing, of the two. Nothing's impossible. No. So we could see a little no. offset action there. So who do you think is going to win the UCLA-Kentucky? I'm gonna say UCLA because that's what I have in my bracket. Because <laughs> I want. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to agree with UCLA, but I do think it's this Kentucky team is extremely interesting. It, it's gonna go either way. It's gonna be a good game. So. Um, do you think? Uh, 
Wisconsin will be able to beat Florida. Two Big, team ten, two big ten teams have gone out, and they're going to be the third. So I, I don't believe they can get it done. I'd have to agree. Yep. I think Florida's just a dominant defensive team, and I think they're, like, <clears throat> like we've said multiple times throughout the show, they're peaking at the right time. They're exactly. playing their best basketball at yeah. the right time. Um, so that's really all I have for the NCAA tournament. Got those games coming up at 7 o'clock tonight. Yep, we're going to be watching four games. Keeping track. See what happens and hopefully just good basketball. Yeah, I'm just a fan of good basketball. Absolutely. Especially when your team's out. All you can root for is the underdog and some good basketball. Yeah. Or. I, I really don't want to root for anyone but Michigan right now. You can still root for them <laughs> in your heart. I do root for them in my heart. <laughs> but that's all. That's all, all right. I got. So all right, we'll, uh, we'll sign off and see you guys another day. Yep. Thanks for listening. All right. Sounds good, my man. All right. Have a good one, guys. <laughs> <laughs>